There will be some occasions where we'll need to make queries to the database to analyze data and be able to make decisions. In this sense, we may need to group data according to one or several criteria, make calculations, and finally, view the result in a certain way, such as a static table with fixed rows and columns, a dynamic table which allows, for instance, shifting columns and grouping data, or a simple chart. The query object allows us to create these queries in a simple and intuitive way, thus enhancing the value of the information retrieved from the database. Our objective will be to create a query that returns only the cities of France, each one of them with their corresponding number of tourist attractions. So, we open Genexus and start by creating an object of query type called Attractions Query. In its structure, we will define the query. Let's take a closer look at the meaning of these components. Attributes. Here we need to mention all the attributes that will be part of this query. The statement is simple and it's done as a plain list. So we add the attributes that we want to see in our query. That is to say, city name and country name. We save. In the description column, we will see the tag that will be used to display the attributes in the query result. But in addition to attributes, here we can also define functions, even nested functions, such as count, sum, and average. In our example, we're interested in viewing the number of tourist attractions of each city. So we type count attraction name. We save. If we've defined a function over an attribute, we can indicate that the result should be displayed as a percentage. This is done through the show as percentage option by right clicking or pressing F4 and editing the corresponding properties. Now let's talk about parameters. Here we can indicate parameters received to be used in the query if applicable, because not all queries receive parameters. We will enter its name, description, data type, if it's based on a domain or an attribute, if it's a collection, and its default value if applicable. In our example, we don't need to state parameters. Now let's talk about filters. Here we indicate the filters to be applied to the query. We can define a filter group, which by default will be joined by AND. However, we can also use the OR connector. Some of the possible syntaxes to define filters are as follows. Attribute equal to a value, or another comparison, such as greater than, greater than or equal to, etc. Attribute equal to a list of indicated values, entered in this way. Attribute included in a range of values as shown below. And in this way, we could create other groups with various filter combinations. Let's continue with our example. We only want to see the query for the cities of France. So we enter the following filter. Country name equals France. We save. Finally, in the order by section, we can indicate the order in which we want to view the data resulting from the query. In this case, we want the query to be ordered by city name, so we indicate that order. We save. If we want a descending order, we can state that in the properties. Okay. Our query has been defined, but how will the results be displayed? Let's select the Preview tab. Here we can preview the query results. Note that even though here we can see the query results in the query object itself, this is not possible when we run the application. To view the query that we've created using the query object at runtime, 
we must include the query viewer user control in a web form. We create a web panel called WP Query. and drag the query viewer user control to the form. In the object property, we indicate the name of the query object that will be run within this viewer. By editing the type property below the output group, we can select one of the three ways in which the output is displayed. We select chart we can choose a certain type of chart. We leave column and enter cities as title of the x-axis and attractions quantity as title of the y-axis. We save. Now we can see our entire query at runtime, so we press F5. 